Hello, comrades and fans of action-packed cinema. Today we're going to journey into the high-octane world of Brother 2. Get ready for an adrenaline-fueled adventure across continents as we follow our enigmatic protagonist, Danila, on his quest for justice and redemption. So if you're ready to explore the thrilling Russian underworld, hit that subscribe button and join us as we delve into the action, drama, and indomitable spirit of Brother 2. And now let's jump into this cinematic ride. The film opens with Danila Bagrov being interviewed on television with two friends from the army. It is made apparent that unlike the prequel's subplot, where Danila was depicted as an HQ clerk, he is in fact a combat veteran from the First Chechen War, which explains his non-amateur performance and skill in the first film. All three now live in Moscow, where Ilya Sedovoy is a professional programmer who works for the State Historical Museum on Red Square, whilst Konstantin Gromov works in the security department for the Nikolaevsky Bank. Danila himself reveals his ambition to study medicine. After the interview, the friends retire to a bathhouse where Kostya reveals that his twin brother, Dmitry Gromov, is an ice hockey player for the Chicago Blackhawks and is being blackmailed by American kingpin Richard Menace. According to Konstantin, Dmitry once played for his home club, the Kiev Falcons, when he was invited by the NHL and emigrated to the United States. After he moved, the Ukrainian mafia moved in on him, demanding protection money. Dmitry was desperate and appealed to Menace, who took him under contract. Due to Dmitry's lack of English, he did not understand the terms, which effectively left Dmitry as an indentured servant with most of the money going to Menace. Konstantin informs that Menace has come to Moscow to meet his employer, Valentin Belkin, to discuss an international business proposal. In a different part of Russia, that same television program was watched by Danila's brother Viktor Bagrov and their mother. Seeing how her older son has turned into a drinking policeman whilst her younger is now on TV, she pleads that Viktor travels to Moscow and seek his brother there. The irony of the scene is that in the first film, it was exactly the opposite, where Viktor was the role model. After the bathhouse, Danila meets up and begins an affair with a Russian pop singer Irina Saltikova, who he met at the TV station. The next morning, Kostya approaches Belkin and pleads to remind Menace about his brother. Belkin agrees, but Dmitry Gromov is of little concern to both of them. Belkin, being a Russian kingpin himself, wishes to cooperate with Menace to legalize their assets. The importance of the new venture with Menace makes Belkin see Kostya as a threat. And that evening, Danila stops at Kostya's apartment to discover him shot dead. Danila and Ilya begin planning their revenge. On the black market, they purchase a CD with personal information about Belkin, whilst a visit to a neo-Nazi friend of Ilya's gets them armed with trophy guns and grenades from the Second World War. Meanwhile, Victor has arrived in Moscow and manages to find Danila in the museum, where he agrees to join their plans and helps them steal a car. Danila and Victor make first contact with Belkin at an elite gymnasium where Belkin's son Fedya is studying. Danila introduces himself as Fedya's new teacher and invites Belkin to the staff room for a private conversation. At gunpoint, he questions him about Kostya's murder. Belkin reveals that it was done under the pressure of menace and discloses much of his illegal operations, including smuggling of pornography and extortion. Afterwards, he pleads for mercy, which Danila grants, saying, it would be a shame to leave such a kid with no father. Earlier, Danila watched Fedya read a very patriotic poem to the audience which moved him, and he will continue to mouth it throughout the film. The trio clear the museum, and Danila gives Ilya his remaining money to procure passports and tickets to Chicago. It is revealed that Kostya's murder was due to a misunderstanding, as he only wanted him fired. However, the stunt in the school now threatens his whole operation with menace. Belkin's thugs and his police contacts begin to search the city. Danila decides to lay low at Saltikova's apartment in the elite Kotelnikovskaya Embankment Building, 
and brings Victor with him. Meanwhile, Belkin's thugs discover the stolen car in the building's parking lot. Saltikova's chauffeur Boris warns Danila, and the Bagrov brothers ambush the mobsters and then lead them on a chase through the town and into a closed alley where they make quick work of the thugs with the Maxim gun they took from the museum. News of Bagrov's success concern Belkin's partners, who begin doubting the security of their operation. Learning of the bought tickets under Bagrov's name, Belkin alerts the Ukrainian mafia in Chicago. To avoid capture, the brothers fly to America separately, and Victor arrives in Chicago without any suspicion. Danila instead takes a flight to New York City, where he arrives in Brighton Beach. There, he buys a cheap car to travel to Chicago by road, but it breaks down just outside Pennsylvania. Stranded, he hitches a ride to Chicago with trucker Ben Johnson. Despite Danila's limited English, the two become close friends, and Ben shows Danila much about American life. Upon their arrival in Chicago, Ben drives by prostitutes, one of whom, Marilyn, turns out to be a Russian named Dasha. Back in Moscow, Belkin is still determined to catch Danila, but a background check revealed that Victor was on board the flight to Chicago. Moreover, a background check reveals his identity as the Tatar hitman from the first film. Paranoid, Belkin alerts the Ukrainian mafia in Chicago to find him. Meanwhile, Victor arrives to the Ukrainian district in Chicago and quickly begins to spend his money, enjoying the American lifestyle, making tours of the city dressed as Al Capone. Danila attempts to meet up with Dimitri and Victor, but is unable to make contact with both. Badly needing a translator, he decides to find Dasha and travels to the neighborhood where she works. Just before he can run away with her, he is savagely beaten by Dasha's pimp's henchman. The police let him go on the basis of recognizance and he gets revenge by tricking the same group into selling him weapons, which he steals by subterfuge. Afterwards, Dasha's pimp attempts to get even with her but is in turn killed by Danila leaving Dasha no choice but to go with him. Danila and Dasha finally meet up with Victor, and the three enjoy an evening campfire on the beach of Lake Michigan, where they share their experiences and attitude towards American society. Dasha tells her story of how she came in the early 1990s as an exchange student, worked in escort service in New York before finally degrading into a street hooker. Victor, on the other hand, is much too impressed with the power of money that drives America. Danila, however, shows his patriotism and offers Dasha to come back home with them, replying to her, what will I do there? With the, what have you achieved here, inferring to her social status. As for Victor, Danila reminds him there are things that money can't buy. This philosophical discussion is broken by a homeless black man who stumbles across them and is insulted when Danila called him N-word, not knowing that the word is an insult in English. In Russia, the word N means only a person with a colorful skin. While waiting for a fight to come, Dasha replies that she believes that the aggressive primal nature of black people drives fear into white people, thus making them ultimately superior. This theory fails its test when Danila's warning shots into the sand quickly forces the attackers to flee. Regardless, Danila finally begins to move in against Menace and first hits his front, the Club Metro. Expecting Menace to be there, he sneaks a weapon into the toilet and during a rock concert that evening, involving the BI2 band, kills every member of Menace's mafia he encounters in the basement. Menace, alas, is absent. Victor, himself picked up a tail by the Ukrainian Mafia, draws them away and kills their hitman, but not before learning of the Mafia's operations and headquarters. The next morning, Danila climbs 50 or so floors on a skyscraper's fire escape to reach Menace's office. He finds him in a game of chess. Killing his colleague, he finally confronts him alone. As if continuing the debate on the lakeside, in his monologue, in Russian, he asks the American if power really comes from money, arguing that his brother, whose photo is lying next to the chess table, believes this theory. 
Danila instead thinks that power lies in the truth. He, implying menace, can be rich, but not strong, as his money he stole from someone else. Thus, the tricked person is right, so he is stronger. Almost weeping in fear, Menace agrees. In conclusion, Danila demands all of the money taken from Dimitri to be returned. Giving Dimitri his money, Danila sets off back home to Moscow, driving through the Ukrainian neighborhood. He witnesses a police siege around the former headquarters of the Ukrainian mafia, where Victor killed everyone inside. As he is dragged out handcuffed, Victor shouts his intentions to stay in America. The film ends with Danila and Dasha taking off to Moscow, and the final call to Irina is not intercepted, as presumably Belkin is also removed by his investors, who in an earlier scene face-to-face -face told him that the sum of money he set up in this operation is too much to be risked. At the airport, Dasha is told that she will never be able to enter the United States again due to the expiry of her visa, but she does not care, signaling an intention she will never come back by giving the gate agent the finger. The end.